Welcome to this video on the fractional distillation of crude oil that could be used by students studying for an IGCSE in chemistry. Uh, welcome. So, uh, we're going to look at a few or three questions before we start. Uh, what is crude oil? How is it formed? And why can crude oil be separated by fractional distillation? So I'm actually going to start with how crude oil is formed. So it's formed from... Uh, well. It's it was, it's been formed over thousands of years. Um, small marine animals and plants die. Okay, they sink to the bottom of the sea. And they get covered in sediment. That might be bits of rock, uh, bits of shell, other detritus in the sea. And this sediment builds up, uh, and so the remains of the animals and the plants um, are subjected to heat, subjected to pressure, and they decompose to form crude oil. And the oil is a sort of thick, black, gloopy liquid and it's a mixture of hydrocarbons and from that definition probably springs another definition of what exactly is a hydrocarbon and a hydrocarbon is a molecule or a compound made of carbon and hydrogen only. And it's so important that you put that word only in there. For example, um, ethanol has the formula C2H5OH. And ethanol is not a hydrocarbon because it's not only made up of carbon hydrogen. It's in fact got some oxygen in there, so it's not a hydrocarbon. Methane, CH4, is a hydrocarbon, okay, because it's only made up of carbon and hydrogen. So crude oil is a mixture of different sized hydrocarbons. And because the hydrocarbons are of different sizes, they're going to have different boiling points. So that's the answer to the third question. Why can crude oil be separated by fractional distillation? It's because the hydrocarbons in crude oil have different boiling points, and I'm going to just say B points, due to being different in size. So within that mixture of crude oil, you've got some quite long hydrocarbons, and you've also got short hydrocarbons, and these have different boiling points. And we're now going to look at actually how this fractional distillation actually works. So this is our industrial fractionating column. It looks very different to one we might use in the lab. And the first step is incredibly important. It's, it happens to the crude oil even before it has reached the column. And that's the crude oil is heated and most of it is vaporised. So what happens is the vapours and the remaining liquid enter the column here. So vapours and remaining liquid I spelled remaining wrong, how embarrassing liquid enter the column and the column is, well, it's heated at the bottom, which means the bottom of the column is hot and the top of the column is much cooler. And when explaining how the fractional distillation of crude oil works, it is important to note that down. So uh, there is, we describe it as a temperature gradient, almost like a slope, 
in the column. The top is cool, the bottom is hot. Now the component which didn't evaporate, the, the component that entered the column as a liquid just sinks to the bottom and is extracted down there. The remaining components are gaseous and they rise through the column and they need to, or you need to work out where they might stop. You'll see the column has these shelves and the shelves are at different temperatures. They're at colder temperatures the higher up the column they go and the gas will condense when it meets a shelf with a temperature lower than its boiling point. So let's imagine we've got a gas and you can just hear the buzzer going there for my dinner. I'm just going to pause this now. Okay, I've just turned off the buzzer. My dinner's almost ready, so uh, I better make an efficient job of this. Right, so we're going to have a look at a gas which has a boiling point of 70 degrees Celsius. So this gas enters the column and it passes through this first shelf. And it doesn't, if it doesn't condense there because the temperature is higher than its boiling point. It reaches the next shelf. Does it condense here? No, because the temperature is still higher than its boiling point. Gets to the next shelf. Does it condense here? No, because it's still higher than its boiling point. Gets to the next shelf? Ah, this is nice and cold. This is 40 degrees C. So the gas condenses on this shelf here, which is 40 degrees C. And when you're answering an exam question on this topic, you need to describe that process. So you need to say the gases rise through the column and the gas condenses when it reaches a shelf with a temperature lower than the boiling point. And that's all you really need to say when describing the fractional distillation of crude oil. You'll notice that at the top there's another pipe and some of the fractions, uh, ones with a boiling point of lower than 40 degrees C, won't condense in the column and they will come out as gases. So we get some really thick gloopy liquids coming out the bottom of the column and some very light flammable gases at the top. And now we're going to look at the names of the different fractions, how they're used and trends in properties of the fractions that come out of the column. Right, so you'll need to learn the names of the fractions that come out of the distillation column. So at the top we have what are called refinery gases. The next one down we have gasoline. Then we have kerosene. I apologise for my handwriting here. It's very difficult to write with this stylus that I've got. Uh, down here we've got diesel. Uh, here we've got fuel oil and at the bottom we have bitumen and you have to know the names of these they haven't been asked recently in exams um, but you are expected to know them and um, what I teach my students is the sort of rhyme of really gassy kangaroos drink Foster's beer and that seems to help them um, so what you'll notice is that as you go up the column the boiling point of these actually decreases. That's quite an important thing to note. Now bitumen is a really thick black tarry substance which is used for road surfaces. It's really thick, it's gloopy, it's very very viscous fuel oil is less viscous, viscous being how 
thick the liquid is, how syrupy it is. Fuel oil is less syrupy than bitumen. Diesel, a little bit less syrupy than fuel oil. And likewise, as we go slightly further up, they become less viscous again. So the viscosity increases down the column. Viscosity increases. And you might have picked up on the final things from just what I've been saying, that bitumen has a very dark colour. And I don't know if you've seen gasoline when it comes out of the uh, petrol pumps at the petrol station, but it's quite yellowy in colour. So as you go down the column, the fractions get increasingly dark in colour. So darken in colour. And two years ago, students were expected to comment on that in the exam. So as you go up the column, the boiling point decreases. As you go down the column, the viscosity increases. And as you go down the column, the fractions get darker in colour. You also need to know the uses of these fractions. Now, I'm not going to write down the uses of each fraction. I'm just going to talk them through. So, bitumen is used to tar the surfaces of roads. Fuel oil um, is used to heat some houses. Um, I remember when I was uh, when I was a child, uh, we used to have a tank in the back garden uh, which contained oil, and that was what the boiler in the house ran off to heat the house. Um, so every year my mum would arrange um, for an oil tanker, this was always a bizarre moment, to come in and deliver the oil to the backyard. So there was this big pipe that went from this tanker out the front um, to the uh, this sort of lorry out the front, round to the back where there was a, where there was a big tank. Um, so fuel oil was used uh, sort of domestic heating. Uh, diesel, obviously used as lorry fuel. Kerosene uh, is used for jet fuel jet fuel, aeroplane fuel, gasoline is used for cars, and refinery gases. Well, those are things like methane, um, butane, propane. They're also used for domestic fuels to heat houses. My current flat, um, the boiler runs off natural gas, which is methane, which is a refinery gas. Um, camping gases, uh, which you might use on camping trips like propane, are also refinery gases. And you might have heard a buzzer in the background. That's uh, my dinner ready, uh, and that's a nice point to say that's the end of this video. I hope it's proved useful.